Even recently, the Office of the United States President claimed it could invoke federally, federally ordered quarantine, but it was mistaken. The United States government does not have such authority over the federal citizens. Such authority to regulate health and welfare is not in the United States Constitution, but it remains with the states. Let's look at an illustration to help us better understand. The citizens of each state gave power to their states in each <clears throat> respective formation. And then in 1789, the states gave certain powers to the federal baby. We call this group of powers the delegated powers. And we see those specifically in the United States Constitution. A second group, the shared powers, are powers that the states set up also in 1789, and they share these with the newly formed federal government. It's harder to study those in this course, however, as they are evolving through different court decisions and the actions of the two, that is, the states and the federal government. Remember that many times we see the actions of the two, the states on one side and the federal government on the other. They're often at odds, which is a healthy balance <clears throat> of powers, the balance of powers working in our own self-rule. The last group is the reserve powers. The states reserve their own powers, and this group is actually about 95% of all laws in existence. Thus, only about 5% of law comes from the federal government. For example, we're about to study contract law, and nearly 100% of contract law is state-made law. Well, that fact doesn't really answer our question of why we think the federal government is more important. But our discussion helps us better understand a future point, which is what compromises the delegated laws, and where can the federal government rightly take action and direction without the state's agreement or guidance?